Uh, I'm indeed founder and CEO of, uh, of Open Social. For those um, that you that haven't uh, met me before, we started a company uh, from the Netherlands quite a while ago, doing tons of different projects, IT projects for a lot of great organizations. But we really stuck with the community building aspect because it was just so much fun to build communities, see people organize, have a real life impact. And we started the open social project from that now a few years in. And indeed, uh, as Matthijs said, saw a huge boost in community building. And that also made us think, hey, what is a difference between these communities? And how can we understand uh, the needs of our clients in these different communities better? And also what does open social do really well as community building? and what not. So for example, with an intranet where you're with your colleagues, is that a community? How is that different from being a volunteer community or a community around association members? So that made us think, and uh, we'd like to share some of that ideas we have and some of the choices we made. And those will be some cool building blocks uh, for next webinar sessions uh, sessions as well. Uh, some, some pretty big plans around that, I would say. Moritz? Thanks, Moritz. So I'm uh, Moritz Arendt. I'm the product manager, actually, of the company. So I'll, um, uh, I'm, uh, I'm making sure that we build the best output or create the best output of all the feedback that we get from different stakeholders. Um, so obviously, also for me, it's very important to understand like there's different community types and the different needs that people have, right? So to create a roadmap that really fits the needs of the customers, of the end users. Um, it's it's, to, it's it's important to understand what are people actually using the community for. We also done a lot of research in that over the last year to understand on different levels from a business needs, from a site manager need, from a community manager need, from a end user need. Like uh, what are people coming for for open social? And um, yeah, I think like this uh, community types um, really helped me figuring out um, what are different use cases and what could be like prototypical. Uh, uses of open social and what are the features that really facilitate the overall goal of those different um, prototypes of communities. So looking forward for the discussion today, looking also forward of, of, of always to get impact from people who are um, building actual communities who are already working with open social or are interested in creating a community. So uh, looking forward for the next uh, half hour. Yeah. All right. Thanks. So let's quickly uh, uh, get into it. Maybe uh, we can, uh, there's some people respond in the chat. So I would love to ask if they want to, uh, for the, because we're not that big of a group, maybe some people can explain about if they're already having a community, if they're starting a community project. I think there's uh, Niklas in the chat. Niklas, uh, willing to share a few insights on what you're working on? No, <laughs> maybe uh, let's see. Italo, is that your first name or last name? My name is Italo. Yes, Italo. I'm yes, it, I'm Italian. Um, well, That's I am um, <laughs> <laughs> Italo from Italy. Is quite easy, straight. Uh, yeah, I'm very interested in this because I'm a Drupal developer since long time, and. Uh, what I like the most of Drupal, I know that uh, open session uh, is also based uh, mostly in Drupal. And the, what I like the most of Drupal among uh, all its great features is the community. So what is uh, behind the, the, all the Drupal developments and uh, this open source community that uh, uh, prefers uh, uh, collaboration over competition. So I really like uh, digital communities. Uh, besides these, uh, I am a, a passionate fan and also expert about uh, digital uh, mapping. I'm maintaining all the geofield stack for Drupal 8 and Drupal 9. And I like uh, communities based on, uh, on geolocation. I think that there is a great potential in uh, building uh, shared knowledge on a geolocated base uh, yeah so i know yep. open social 
distribution. Mm, not that expert about it, so I would like uh, really I would like to be interested. I'm, I'm interested in uh, also looking what kind of uh, successful stories you have built up with your product. And yeah, we'll share some of it. that. Yeah. Most okay. Of that. Thanks. Great. And anybody else that is uh, joined that like to share a bit what they're working on? Ah, Nicholas shared he's uh, working on a community for people working with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. So that's great. We love to work with the UN. They're a big uh, uh, sponsor of Open Social. Um, love to hear more about that, uh, Nicholas. Anyone I else? Can, yeah. I, I can, uh, if you want, Taco. Hi, I'm uh, Manuela. Hi. Hi. Hi, Manuela. Hi, also Italian, and um, I, I volunteer resource manager for WAGS, uh, the World oh, yeah. Association of Girl Guides and Girl Scouts. So, uh, <laughs> a very, yes, exactly. I can't say I've not been heads there. Uh, I'm a recent customer of, uh, of, of Open Social. And so, of course, you know, in the way we'll, we will set up our community, uh, understanding better. Uh, uh, our community is really, really important because uh, you know it's going to be a mix of community of practice or community actions. It depends on kind of sub communities uh, that, that that we'll have and, and we'll build, and how then uh, uh, they intersect uh, with one another. Um, so uh, yes, that's that's why I'm here. Uh, and uh, uh, it, it is uh, just as it you know we're all very excited to to do this. It's a uh, it's beautiful work. Yeah, thank you. And uh, the mix of community types is something that uh, is also super interesting. We'll talk about it a bit later as well. Okay, thanks. Uh, anybody else for us to understand who is in the call? If not, that's also perfectly fine. All right. All right. Well, oh, maybe Geert, is, Geert is actually saying... Uh, um, He's uh, uh, working in uh, formation through co-creation, uh, building offline local communities and uh, learn more about, potentially learn more here about online communities. All right. Yeah, we'd love to talk about uh, individual projects as well, of course. If you have more questions uh, after this talk, uh, ask us any questions now or you know, reach out to us by mail. Uh, we are always interested about different projects because all communities are unique, so never boring to talk about them. Um, but hey, Matthijs, floor is yours again. <laughs> okay, cool. Thanks. <laughs> um, yeah, so indeed, so like we said, uh, uh, communities is a big buzzword right now. But um, yeah, there are a lot of different uh, communities out there and they differ by the type of member that's joining, the type of discussions that they have in the community, the, the culture that's there. And, and the goal to which uh, the community is jointly uh, working. And what we like at Open Social about these community types, that it forces us to think uh, from the community member point of view, and it forces us, us to think about what drives these members to actually come together and to form a community and to jointly work uh, towards a common goal. Uh, so it forces you to, stay, to take that community member point of view and to think about the purpose uh, of the community. Why are they joining? What is the higher purpose that they're collaborating on? And uh, that is uh, a very good way to actually focus on where the most added value is and where uh, uh, the, we have to focus our functionality and our strategy on when, when implementing a new community. Um, so we can identify these six types of uh, communities and I'll quickly uh, introduce them uh, one by one. Uh, the first one is the community of action. Uh, and in the community of action, uh, volunteers are mobilizing as a movement to jointly make a change in the world. A uh, big example of an open social uh, uh, community of action is Greenwire, of course, by, by Greenpeace. Uh, and these type of communities are all about activating and connecting people who want to make a change in the world and, and facilitating uh, grassroots campaigns and connecting members in different locations to actually facilitate, support and encourage those, those, those uh, grassroots campaigns and jointly work towards uh, uh, the bigger goal of, uh, of the uh, organization uh, organizing the community. Uh, the second one is community of practice, which is all about knowledge management and about professionals uh, sharing uh, knowledge and skills and learning together. Uh, so this is all about uh, sharing, sharing learnings and sharing back best practices. So it's, it's about sharing knowledge, but it's also about learning together. 
uh, and actually experts learning from, from newbies yeah, as experts sharing uh, uh, knowledge uh, with others uh, in the community who, who might need that knowledge and connecting that together. Uh, and the third one is community of circumstance. This is uh, a community of people in the same life stage or circumstance uh, sharing uh, uh, tips and support. Uh, uh, unfortunately, these are often uh, patients or, or fellow sufferers who are in the same situation and who are actually uh, uh, looking out for such a, a community of circumstance for emotional support, but also for practical tips and scientific advice, for example, that specifically applies to their situation. So that's a uh, community of circumstance. And then uh, an example we have is uh, HSE, Health Service Executives from Ireland, um, which we'll elaborate a bit more on later as well. Then there's community of place, people living or working in the same geographical area. So uh, these communities are uh, 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 connected, uh, members of these communities are connected because they live in the same residential areas. Uh, another example is a local bar or a public space, uh, such as a library. And in this uh, location, they are partially reliant on each other. So they're, they're jointly uh, contributing to that location and uh, um, being a part of that uh, location that they rely on each other. And often there's a local marketplace and, and uh, uh, typical examples of online uh, communities of place are these Facebook groups where you say you are a typical uh, Amsterdam resident uh, if you are or when, and then uh, yeah, you share local tips or local marketplaces as part of that. So that's community of place. Community of interest is people sharing the same interest or passion. This is typically a hobby community. So it could be a community about fashion, movies, games, or sports, or the fans of Lady Gaga, or whatever you uh, can imagine. So this is often those type of, uh, of hobby communities. And the last one is community of support, which is uh, uh, consisting of people helping each other, uh, usually in a non-professional and non-material way with a particular shared question or problem. Uh, these uh, communities of support or brand communities are very popular, especially in the recent years, because for commercial organizations, they are very advantageous for these brands to, to set up these, uh, these support communities because it saves customer support costs, it increases customer satisfaction because uh, questions are answered quickly, uh, and it's a good marketing tool. It's just a great way to do word of mouth uh, and do actually to, to do a search engine optimization to be able to be found online. So those are the six types of, uh, of community, communities we can identify. And uh, to take that a step further in the next slide, Adrian, uh, we would like to ask you, what type of community are you? Or what type of community are you uh, uh, predominantly? So what's your main type of community? And we have there the six options that you can choose from. And the seventh one is, well, I'm a mix of different types, or I'm not sure. I don't know. My type is not here. Then we would like to hear what type of community you are. So I see. In the meantime, uh, Matthijs has some uh, interesting feedback from, uh, from Geert. Uh, he says, I would call the first group a community of impact and reserve action for a group without a higher purpose. Geert, are you willing uh, to elaborate on that uh, uh, vocally or because um, it's uh, something we've also, yeah. also had discussions about? Yeah. Yes, I will. Um, it's, it's something I miss because I, of course, I'm looking more from uh, offline communities, but uh, I know a lot of communities who are doing things together and, and forming a community because they they do some they act together they do some things they organize uh, uh, a party or or uh, or uh, ongoing things together but without a higher purpose without wanting to change the world uh, I think this is a difference here not not uh, I, I don't uh, um, how, how do you say it I don't um, Say the one is better than the other, but it's it's something it's it's a difference, I think. Yeah, we 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 also seen that indeed some communities have purpose, and some have not. So for me, for example, most things that happen on Facebook they don't really have a purpose. They're just yeah. you know but putting goal, content out there. Goal, they have a goal, I think, but not a purpose. Yeah, or sometimes they're not even a goal. I just put as much pictures of my cat out there as possible. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but that's that's, uh, that's that's not what I want to say. It's it's. Uh, uh -huh. uh, I think it's the, about the difference between a goal and a purpose. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
So we, we also struggled. We also had one, one type that we, we said there was a community of purpose as a community type. Mm -hmm. But then we decided that, you know, any of the communities, mainly that were on the left side, they, are, they can all have a purpose. While the community on the right side, they have much less purpose. So the community around Amsterdam mm -hmm. has much less purpose or community around interest like Lady Gaga has much less okay. purpose. So we made yeah. the decision to say, okay. okay, we see the ones on the left as communities of purpose and the ones on the right, not so much communities of purpose. We're gonna talk a bit more about that yeah. later. Yeah. Um, and of impact, like, yeah, the, the, you know, the, the ones on the left, I think they all want to make impact in some way, right? Mm -hmm. The community but, of but circumstance. I think, right. I think you're right that an action, like a community of action does not automatically imply a purpose. But for us in our definition and in the, in the areas we work, it, we, as Taco said, like we decided it does. So, it, mm -hmm. so basically like, that's why we to choose for action because it differentiates towards other communities in terms of you want to uh, organize events, you want to go into like uh, like uh, workshops and so forth, right? Like that that you really want to drive a change in the world by your actions. So basically, I think how we defined it is like similar to how you see the impact one. But um, it's it's definitely like maybe even describing it better what we- What I'm talking talk. about is, is also connected to communities of place. But here you say they are living or working in the same geographical area, but it's, that's the reason why they are on, on the same community, but you have, can have, you can live in the same uh, place but not connecting because you're living in the same place, but connecting because you want to act together. Yeah. 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 So Again, interesting that you would mention it because this is another community type we had a lot of discussion around where I tend to agree. Um, and it's also one of the reasons why we didn't really, like the ones on the right side, we said we not primarily focus on, um, as le at least from our side, um, because we feel the same about this. That yeah. location feels a little bit like a second, almost secondary indicator. That being said, there are obviously like, like, uh, like a local community for your for your neighborhood right that is really around your neighborhood so kind of like the purpose is then might maybe still to improve your neighborhood but the primary connector of that community and the identifying factor of it is the location but we agree with you that in generally this is almost more like a secondary identificator for mm. a community or yeah. a grouping factor or such so this yeah. is also why we decided to put it on the right side why it is very valid and applies to also a lot of those hybrid models um, which uh, I think Matthias will get, get into soon <laughs> um, we, we don't want to fo focus on it primarily yeah. yeah, I think what, what's clear here already from this discussion is that these are theoretical handles to approach your community and what is the common denominator of the members and what is, what is binding them together. And these are theoretical handles. And in practice, just realistically, they often, communities are often uh, different types at once. So they're a combination of these types and these three types often bleed into each other. So they are often a combination. And you might even argue that it's uh, if your community is a combination of these different theoretical community types, that it's actually good. Because uh, then you, that means you have a very clearly defined uh, group or, uh, of members that are part of your community. So you have a clear identity and you have a clear uh, uh, line between who is part of your community, who is your target group and who is not, which is good because then people identify with that and you, have, uh, uh, you can actually uh, uh, create your engagement strategy and, and your activation based on a very uh, strict target group. So uh, you have a much better way to approach them. Um, so in these, these are theoretical handles uh, and they often bleed into each other. It's clear that, that, uh, that that's uh, the case. Uh, and the persons of uh, answering mixed, I'm not sure, uh, uh, saw that already. Uh, can would those want to elaborate if they are consciously saying we are a mix or, or are you just not sure and you wanna introduce also a new type of community? No, I, I, I will say that uh, we are a mixed uh, um, uh, in the sense that, you know, if I look at the community of action, so if girl guides and girl scouts, and there is a very strong element of girl led advocacy. Uh, and so it's really, you know, about uh, enabling and empowering girls to take action on matters that 
that matters to them. So it's not our own advocacy, it, it is uh, you know, their advocacy. And our role is to give them the tool uh, uh, to thrive and, and grow as, a, uh, as girls and young women. And within those two, there is also girl advocacy. So that, that's you know, the action, but also we have a large community of volunteers. So in that case, it's even different because, so it's two actions, right? Those volunteer volunteers for wax. So while the girl advocacy is about what, you know, say, girls care about different things in the world, of course, uh, and it's about what they care about. Our volunteers about delivering wax mission and vision. So it's more di directed. And then there is a community of practice because we are a, a member-based uh, organization. And of course, uh, you know, it's 150 uh, uh, members around the world and you can see partners, you know, you have trainers, you have finance people, you have all of these and the idea is really to connect them together to strengthen the association. And then there is the interest in one year or so, we will open to local leaders. And, you know, I, I will say we don't see girl guys and girl scouting as a hobby. It, it's, it's, it, it's, I will say, you know, much more complex and the purpose is much higher. Uh, but within girl guys and girl scouting, there are girls that are, you know, very big fan of badges or of knots or, uh, you know, of songs, we, we, you name it, of, of cooking, and in yep. all of the, the idea of girl guiding and girl scouting in general, and, and in that sense, there is also the element of of being a community of interest in which we share. Oh, which is your uniform? What is it? Which? Uh, what the right? I guess. Yeah. So, so, for those of you who, who didn't understand it or by already, the WAGS is World Association for Girl Guides and Girl Scouts. Um, there's, I think, 10 million plus members globally or something like that. So yes, um, definitely a large, complex community with hybrid models, I would say. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So, so indeed, so you're, you're a mix of all these types. And what we often see also in practice happening is that uh, there are subgroups within a community that, that, that have uh, a specific community type. So that have a specific goal or a specific purpose. So like you said, maybe there's a subgroup with uh, a specific with cat lovers within the wax community i don't know we, we, we could say something you mentioned some other examples just now uh, but that's very much part and actually an important part of community building as well so so also for when you create a subgroup it's good to identify what is the purpose of this subgroup is it to uh, to actually activate uh, uh, volunteers or to activate uh, some of my members in this community to become part of a committee, for example, of a member committee and to become part of a working group and to actually work together? Or is, uh, is it a specific uh, subgroup for, uh, for sharing uh, uh, knowledge or sharing learnings or sharing uh, uh, blog posts or white papers and scientific content about a specific topic uh, that is a, a community, of uh, community of practice in, in, in that case? Uh, and, and so it makes very much sense to also think of these community types when you create a subgroup, because it makes it very clear about what's the purpose of that subgroup and, and how uh, are people supposed to, to contribute to that and why, are, why should they visit that group. Uh, so for that purpose, uh, it, it also makes uh, great sense. Um, so I think like Taco mentioned already, uh, uh, at Open Social, we mainly focus on uh, these three types of communities. And those, uh, these three types are often organized by mission-driven organizations. So they are the community of action, community of practice, and community of circumstance. And, uh, and you could argue that these are communities in the true sense of the world, because members are driven by a higher purpose and they have a clear goal to which they are working uh, together. Um, and these members are also often intrinsically motivated to become part of that uh, community uh, and uh, by that higher purpose. And they're often organized by mission-driven organizations, which is so many uh, examples like the Greenpeace, the United Nations, but also WACs and, and, and the, the, uh, the typical open social clients. So we, we have identified that we focus on these three types. And uh, we'll quickly go uh, uh, through them one by one with some examples and with uh, some functionality that we offer. So the first one is the community of action. Um, uh, they're often calling themselves a movement instead of a community. Uh, and they're, uh, uh, they're, 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 they're triggered uh, by an urgency to change something in the world. Uh, and the community is all about activating and connecting volunteers and uh, to jointly uh, campaign to make that change in the outside world. Um, 
And because of that link to the outside world, there are often stakeholders both from within the community, but also externally from outside of the community in there, because that's what the aim or the purpose of the community is. Um, and uh, that's also why campaigning is an essential part of these type of uh, communities, communities of action, and which they are all about uh, creating awareness, what's the current situation and what's the change we want to make to change that. Um, and the way in which we activate volunteers is changing a lot. So in the, in the old days, for instance, when you had a trade union, uh, they would, uh, before the existence of the internet or of online communities, you would, you would invite all your trade union members in, uh, in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in maybe a, a, a small room or a hall that you would uh, rent, uh, and you would get like maybe 50 or 100 people there, you would try to activate them and uh, actually activate them to campaign for your common purpose. Well, with online communities, uh, you are can be much more efficient uh, at that and you and, and online activism is harnessing a lot more power potentially uh, because you can gather all your uh, all that energy uh, into an online community uh, and you can actually use online campaigning of course to activate way more people so some typical examples that we have uh, amongst open social are, are greenwire the pachamama alliance uh, milieu defensi the dutch one and and uh, and the policy kitchen is also an example of uh, a community of action uh, do you want to elaborate a bit more on some of those examples, uh, Taco or Morris? Yeah, I'd love to. And, and indeed, like one of the good example is uh, unions. Indeed, you also mentioned that. And what we see, what what differentiates them is uh, they're they're very event based. Um, they are very much about um, campaigns. So so there is definitely this subgroups that are around campaigns or short-term goals within the communities uh, and therefore you see also quite a different set uh, of users and for example in Greenpeace we see a lot of um, it's not a professional so the community of practice is, is a lot of professionals and this is a lot of very diverse people that are sharing a lot more videos and and uh, photos and they're connecting and sharing a lot more messages with each other than you might see in a community of uh of practice say, for example so the greenpeace greenwire is one of our first communities we started working with greenpeace or for 10 years uh this is version three four of their community and now it became this big global platform and they've been a great part uh, of pushing open social forward because of the importance of the volunteers uh, to Greenpeace, of course, but also because Greenpeace likes to innovate and work with new technologies. Um, so this is the original uh, idea around open social was very much around communities of action. So a lot of that uh, is still in the in the uh, in the product. And for example, what Pachamama is doing, Pachamama is uh, an organization based in San Francisco, and they are uh, helping um, a communities in the uh, South American uh, rainforest. I think it is uh, Ecuador and those countries, I have to, if I'm correct. Um, but they do this by, by taking the teachings of, of those tribes and implying them into the uh, nowadays, you know, in our Western uh, vision of society. So what Pachamama is using open social for is a lot of education and training in order to fulfill their mission. So they're maybe not so much driven by direct action or local action as Greenpeace is doing it, but still they're about activating people, making a change in a slow pace by understanding how is my own life affected uh, by the society that I'm living in. So it's definitely a community of action, but just very different than, hey, you know, send letters to your local councilman because they need to stop using Roundup as a pesticide in your streets. Um, and still, you know, it's a community of action. It's, it's also about campaigns. It's also about how can we make sure that we build sustainable programs. We, we are growing our community. We're making these personal connections. Um, and they're both really great examples of, um, yeah, of, of using open social to fulfill their missions. Um, and I think, yeah, you mentioned a couple others uh, like uh, Milieu Defensive, which is part of Friends of, Friends of the Earth International. That's the group that just won this major uh, lawsuit against uh, Royal Dutch Shell, that they actually need to uh, step it up in terms of their uh, CO2 reduction. So that was a great global win for them. And they're also organizing their volunteers through Open Social. So we were 
very proud of that moment. Um, yeah. Cool. Moritz, would you like to elaborate on some of the specific functionality that we offer to these communities? Yeah, yeah I think what Taco mentioned, it's a lot about um, like uh, dri driving people towards a certain purpose and to engage with, with each other. And what we realized in the last years is that um, this is the community, those community types are the communities that have the most need for real-time and direct um, interaction. So real-time chats, for example, that's also what we're currently developing. Um, and also for like um, notification systems that really target based on other actions that people take. So really like, hey, somebody created an event with a tag that might be interesting for you, or somebody just posted this in a group you're joining, right? It's very localized. It's very um, specific to what you are interested in in the community and needs to be direct and fast as possible. So I think- this Push notifications, native app. A, a lot of mobile usage in, indeed in here. So I think this is a very direct, fast paced, uh, informal, community type where a lot of interaction between user to user uh, on a very individual level is happening yeah. and on a localized level i think too all right clear is there uh, any uh, uh, community of action in the room that would like to elaborate on how they are activating their volunteers or how they are using uh, uh, their platform uh, to activate their volunteers maybe Maybe I, I like one thing I just, what we clearly see though, is that this, all these platforms incorporate groups of different types. So there are definitely in Greenwire local groups around people in Amsterdam. They're still about action, but they're very localized. And also we see a lot of uh, interest groups. So yeah. around say music, um, interest and or, or organizing. So these groups are, a, very important and also active part of the community. And the funny thing is that um, what, what what also made really happy is that when when we when we talked to the Greenpeace users, they said, "Oh, I made like great friends through the platforms." And of course, yeah, that's not the original goal of the platform, but because the people find each other and they have the same interests and the same hobbies, they connect also offline. Um, and that was also like a thing that we need to realize, okay, this, this private messaging or group chats, they are actually really important um, because people want to talk about anything, uh, as Moritz said, real time, and not just about campaigning or, or organizing. So it becomes a much more of a social network in that sense as well. I have a question, uh, uh, you know, which is... Uh, 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 not super positive in itself, but uh, it, because uh, you know around you know then connecting um, o offline and the private messages and all of that. Uh, do this uh, uh, like does Green Wire has underage people on it, and how do they manage safeguarding? Yeah, that's that's a, that's a really good question. Um, in general, um, Greenpeace has that, but it's not such a big issue. We have specific platforms. For example, with the Salvation Army, uh, that focus on on youth platforms, and um, we it's, it's difficult. So, for example, for those platforms, we indeed um, simple question or or more like a dilemma. Uh, we think that we should not be able to read private messages because they're private messages, they're chats. So, on one end, from a security perspective, we should not be able to read those. On the other end, if you're dealing with young people or if you're dealing with online harassment, at some level, you need to make sure you can read those or step into that. So with our group, we're now live chat is, is done. Uh, we're adding group chat to that. And we had this discussion and we decided that somebody with a site manager role can always look into these group chats, even though they don't, don't need to be part of the group chat. They're also not listed in the group chat because it's going to be weird, but we are like putting safety over uh, privacy. And this is a constant debate. It's also good that open social is flexible. So for some communities, we can give roles to other people to read along in messaging. Uh, and sometimes we remove the functionality and sometimes we're very keen on uh, using profanity detection and other measures to make sure that the 
evil content is not reaching the platform. Uh, so far, we've had incidents, um, but it's definitely a worry. And, and um, knowing as well stories from, from Facebook or other platforms we might consider safe, uh, where we've seen really bad stories. So in our case, it's looking at the organizational needs and then deciding, okay, do we need to remove access? Do we make things more transparent? Um, do we give features to block users? Uh, for example, only friends can message me, things like that. Um, and it's still something that we're that we're working on. Thank God our communities are not like toxic in nature often, and we don't see this a lot. But it is definitely as we grow, and also with the WAX community, um, yeah, something that we'll have to, uh, yeah, learn and learn over time how this is working and uh, how we can make sure it's safe for people in the community as well. Yeah. All right, thanks. For the sake of time, I'll move on quickly to the next one, the community of practice. <laughs> no worries. Uh, so community of practice is, of course, all about knowledge sharing and learning uh, between the professionals and learning together. Uh, so these are often the professional communities. So you need people in the same trade or in the same profession uh, uh, um, that uh, a form a community of practice. Uh, so it's about connecting expertise and knowledge of these professionals. Uh, these members are driven by increasing their skills and, uh, and learning from each other. Uh, and they're jointly uh, uh, contributing to creating a practice to advance a profession or an industry very often. This is often the case in, uh, in, in the case of professional associations. Um, and uh, so it's all about connecting expertise with interest. And uh, so it's often veterans or experts answering questions of people who want to learn more. Uh, and that can be done also in an official uh, structure sometimes, for instance, like a mentorship program. Uh, that could be facilitated in an uh, online community or, or through events. And these communities of practice are often used uh, to share insights from practical experience, so sharing lessons learned, uh, to explore new markets or, or to drive innovation in a specific uh, area, uh, to develop new policy or to improve professional skills, uh, like I said. And this is one of the oldest types of communities that we are uh, going through because they date back to hundreds of years to the medieval guilds, where you actually uh, uh, had to, uh, which, you, which you wanted to join to, to share knowledge, to share skills and experiences, but also they had official certification programs for you to be able to join that medieval guild. So they're one of the oldest version or the oldest type of communities uh, out there. Uh, so in an online community of practice, it's really crucial that this knowledge is made visible and is made accessible to everyone, because that's what's creating the added value of an online community. And this is often done through, through a resource library, for example, but it can also simply be done, but done by, by members sharing challenges or questions and, and, and posing those in specific groups in a community of practice and having those answered for others to see as well and to contribute as well. Um, and communities of practice are often used by different types of organizations, uh, often within large corporations, where like people from different departments are jointly collabor uh, collaborating to, uh, to specific area of, uh, of innovation, for example. Uh, uh, good examples here are Shell and Philips. Uh, for instance, Shell are having a, a global uh, community of practice to contribute to greener fuels and, and greener um, uh, ways of, of working. Uh, government bodies often use communities of practice for specific uh, policy objectives, for example, to change policy, to get inputs on policy. Uh, but also, of course, professional uh, and trade associations, uh, basically whose members are paying uh, that, uh, that organization to connect them to uh, that knowledge and to that expertise. Uh, and uh, a lot of associations are now moving uh, away from only uh, communicating one way uh, from an ivory tower and actually uh, and, and, and offering a magazine or a newsletter to actually offering uh, a community uh, and connections between their community members year round instead of only a couple of days per year uh, during their annual congress. Uh, this is uh, a hobby horse of me, which I've been talking a lot about. I won't do, do it now, but uh, I see a major opportunity for associations like Indeed Wax, I see you smiling as well, to offer that connection year round instead of only at face to face events, as they, as a lot of associations are used to doing for almost 50 or 60 years since the start of the international conference uh, industry. And there's also a massive uh, opportunity here for an association to have more impact and to have more input and more output towards their, their goal or their mission. Um, so yeah, we see a bit, big opportunity there and big focus uh, uh, for us. 
Um, so some examples, some clear examples we have a Spark Blue uh, and uh, IATI. I'm looking at the time. I think for now uh, I'll, I'll move on from these examples. We also have shared, uh, I, I want to share that already on our website, a blog post with links to these communities and to the specific uh, tools that we offer per type of community. So you can definitely look ahead there as well. Um, yeah. what, do you want to add something more, Jeff? Yeah, I would, would like to quickly add something to this because I think it's very interesting um, to say like, um, the biggest advantage I see here is like that you actually can make a transfer from a very passive uh, community type or from a very passive way of distributing knowledge to a very active one, right? That is really engaging people um, in challenges, in but also in a resource library where people can um, submit new items to a resource library, right? So there, the key here is that the social features of this really add a new depth to a pure informational page that it has been before, where um, where where you can not only send as an organization but actually receive information grow the knowledge and give people like a sense of um sense of being part of the growth of this organization right like yati for example is very discussion oriented and these discussions are then transformed into like uh, specific challenges and they can be then transformed into posts and then are they are integrated into the canon in terms of like the resource library right so from a discussion from a post in a discussion to like a common workshop paper to integrating into the resource lo library this whole content gains like a uh, like like a, like an advocate within this community, right? And yeah. people will feel like they are really contributing to it and are not only passively consuming. Yeah, yeah. I think it, it, this is especially for associations. It's about proactively challenging your members to contribute, and and uh, it's it's either totally reimagining the way you build your community as a professional association. Because the only way you you were able to do this in the past is it was indeed to fly the world and to meet face to face. Uh, uh, but now that that's the way we build communities nowadays is completely different, of course. There are many other tools uh, out there. And uh, yeah, that's a, this is a major part of the digital transformation of associations specifically, which was a long time coming, to be honest. Uh, but it, uh, yeah, so this had to happen. So uh, yeah, we, uh, we really feel that we can contribute a whole lot there to mission-driven organizations like associations as well. I will move on to the uh, communities uh, of circumstance. Um, so community of circumstances uh, is for people who uh, deliberately or not are experiencing the same life circumstance. So like we said, this can be something positive. It could be also a community uh, about parenthood or entrepreneurs, for example. Uh, but of course, the, the more uh, examples are unfortunately groups of patients seeking contact with, with fellow sufferers, sufferers um, for emotional support and advice. So uh, examples that we have is the diabetes uh, funds uh, together in heart failure by the American uh, Heart Foundation. Uh, so these are uh, some examples uh, we have. Um, do we want to elaborate on some of these? I guess not right now because time is running out. Um, no, in, indeed what you, what you said, uh, it can be for example, we, we talked to health service executive, they wanted to build one community for different types of uh, um, yeah, people with different circumstances. In the end, we decided to split them up because we think that people having that are cancer patients or moms that need advice on breastfeedings, um, you know, need a different tone of voice. So in the end, we decided to split these communities up, have their own expertise. Um, and what I'm really proud of is a new project we're doing for them around mental health, where we support uh, time-bound uh, chat groups around certain topics. So people that are struggling with depression can talk to each other in an anonymous way. And we really limit all the data gathering ab about that. And uh, yeah, very proud that especially now yeah, COVID is ending, but it's had a lot, big impact on people's lives um, that we can do this project. So, yeah. Cool. Thanks for that. Um, Adrian, could you start our next or our close up poll to finish uh, to finish this off? Because yeah, like we said, I think before we move on, while people are filling maybe in this this poll, I wanted to say is that um, here, especially in the circumstance, we come back also what we already discussed before with the minor zone platforms, the security aspect and the this um, pri privatization aspect. So that is really important for people, especially in circumstance um, communities where it's about mental health, about very delicate personal things. It's very important 
that you uh, give communities the ability for people to hide their personality without making them unrecognizable. So there's a little bit of a distinction between anonymous, anonymity and identify, fi, uh, <laughs> and being identifiable. So this is very important for a community, for any community that as a member of a community, I know to whom I talk to. Right, that I can say, see, oh, this is the person that made a comment there. This is a person that I'm involved in a discussion, right? Like this personal aspect is key of every communi communication and of this of every community that you know who the people are you are engaging with. So the more information, the more personal details, the more um, um, individual things a profile has, the more likely it is that people are engaging with each other. So you need to make sure that people don't disclose any dangerous private things like locations in some cases, for example, or other things, um, but that they do share a lot of other things that makes them like a, 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 a um, unique username, a unique avatar. It doesn't need to be a profile picture or something like this, right? So this um, is you, one of like the- Like nickname key. can also be, right? Instead of first name, right. last name, you can use a nickname, um, right. yeah. So I think those th those are features that are very important for circumstance to yeah. um, make this community work. Yeah, and this is also what what uh, what specifically uh, it's added value of an owned platform, right? Uh, because you know your data is safe uh, as opposed to maybe a public social network where you may might also be able to join under a false name or anonymously, but uh, still your data is not owned by you or by the organization that you trust. While uh, if, if it is the diabetes funds or, or whatever, the, you trust that organization with your data uh, and you, are, you can join anonymously and you know your data is safe there. So this is a big advantage of an owned platform as well. Uh, in the meantime, I see you filled in uh, uh, the poll. Uh, yeah, this is good to see for us, I think, because uh, we, we indeed, like we said, we're using these types um, uh, uh, because we, uh, uh, we want to actually step into the shoes of the organization of organizing the community into the member and, and actually uh, use it as a way to also group our services. But it goes even further because we are uh, actually working on uh, creating something called the community experience pyramid, um, uh, which we are working on right now. Uh, and we are uh, using that to take a data-driven approach to community management. And we are uh, currently looking at using these different community types, those main three types that we use, uh, to actually build some standard metrics and some standard uh, uh, data-driven groupings and segmentation of the community members uh, to, to help with uh, the community engagement strategy and to help with the community management. Uh, do you want to uh, elaborate a bit more on that, Taco, uh, to round this off, or is this it for now? So, yeah, we, we, we want to help our clients by giving experience out of the box that helps them to reach their organizational goals. And we understand this can be different based on those types and subtypes. But we also think that um, it's important that we understand the user's needs. Do they want to write a blog? Do they want to create an event? Do they want to join a group? And at what stage of their community journey or their experience are they more likely to do something like that? If I just join a community, Maybe we should not ask them to create a new group, but instead propose to them some interesting groups that are matching their interest or that matching their location. Um, so we are introducing this model to really think about what is the journey from a user through different community types and how can we with open social build standards, give insights with analytics and maybe take it even a step further. How can we use, say, artificial intelligence to learn about what the community is doing, uh, how it matches the organizational goal, and how it can offer the user the tools and interest and knowledge that they need in order to enrich their lives. Um, so open social has a lot of ambition. Um, and the community types is really the first step into introducing this. And I think by next week uh, for our clients, we will be sharing this model with them for the input and hopefully also do another, uh, we'll definitely do another webinar uh, on this and other very interesting topics we're working on. Yeah, great. So uh, be on the lookout for that. 
uh, we would like to thank you very much for for joining this sorry that we were running a bit late but by, by seeing that you're still here you found it worthwhile interesting so that's good <laughs> uh, like i said you can find uh, the links uh, to a lot of case studies and to the actual communities uh, uh, through our website under the success stories we also wrote a blog post about this with all the links to specific tools and, and extensions that you can find out more uh, on there and yeah of course do not hesitate to contact us for any more information on that so that leads me to thank you all for joining and uh, uh, have a nice uh, rest of the day and uh, see you next time. Thank you. Thanks thank a lot. You. Bye -bye. Thank you, Matthias. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for joining. Bye -bye. Thank you.